My sweetened condensed milk fudge recipe is easy and delicious. It only has two ingredients and it's made in the microwave, so it really is the best Christmas fudge. I just finished my Christmas cake series and even though those recipes are really easy because they all start the box of cake mix, I wanted to make sure that my followers had one of the easiest recipes possible for a Christmas dessert. Here in this bowl I have one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk and over here I have one 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Here I have an 8x8 casserole dish that I line with plastic wrap for easy removal, a knife and a spatula. All I'm literally going to do is I'm going to add the chocolate chips to the sweet condensed milk. I'm going to stir to combine and then I'm going to melt the chocolate and the sweetened condensed milk together in the microwave. I'm going to do increments of 30 seconds. I'm thinking it will probably take around two minutes after the first 30 seconds. After each interval, mix to make sure that the chocolate does not burn and then return to the microwave. After one minute, you can see it's melting very nicely. After two minutes in the microwave, you can see that everything is melted together. I'm just making sure it's stirred thoroughly. After two minutes of cook time in the microwave, the chocolate was fully melted. As you stir to make sure that the chocolate and sweet condensed milk are fully combined, then is the time to add any additional ingredients. I would recommend maybe a pinch of salt or a bit of vanilla extract somewhere between half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. You could also add in some mix-ins, perhaps some nuts, marshmallows, or if it's for Christmas, some crushed candy canes or peppermint candies. After adding any additional ingredients, pour the fudge into the 8x8 casserole dish. In order to smooth this out, I'm going to use my spatula like that. Actually, I think a spoon would probably be better, a small spoon, but I don't feel like dirtying something else. You could also shake it, smooth it out like that. Honestly, most recipes for two ingredient sweet and condensed milk fudge tell you to put it into an 8x8 casserole dish, but I honestly think that you could do a loaf pan as well. Make sure that everything is ready to go because as you can see, this stuff sets pretty quickly. Although this sweetened condensed milk fudge recipe is easy, I have to admit that I actually had to make it twice. The first time that I made it, the chocolate didn't melt for some reason. I started panicking and for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to add some heavy whipping cream. Although adding a bit of extra liquid may have helped, what really made a difference was brushing the melted chocolate against the side of the bowl and trying to see if I could crush any bits of unmelted chocolate. Once the mixture was as smooth as I could get it, I poured it into a small mold. And then I crossed my fingers, hoping it would turn out. Now it's time to cut into the fudge. This is the fudge that is just the sweet condensed milk and the chocolate. And this is the fudge that is the sweet condensed milk, chocolate that would not melt, and a little bit of cream. Once both fudges were ready to serve, I was really curious as to what the differences would be. I made the recipe that did not go according to plan a day earlier, so maybe that has something to do with it, but the two fudges were definitely different. The one that was just sweet condensed milk and chocolate was harder to cut, but it also seemed to hold its shape. 
On the other hand, the fudge with a bit of heavy whipping cream was definitely a bit easier to cut, but at the same time, I felt like it was a bit more prone to crumbling and a bit more prone to not holding its shape once cut. The fudge with a bit of heavy whipping cream was a bit darker too, I think. When it came time for the taste test, the two ingredient sweet condensed milk fudge was definitely better. It had a much stronger chocolate flavor. The fudge also had a smooth yet firm texture that melted in my mouth as I ate it. In contrast, the fudge from the first attempt not only had less of a chocolate flavor, but it also had a somewhat unpleasant texture. It was kind of gritty, almost like there was a lot of crystallized sugar. In all honesty, it was a lot worse than I was expecting it to be. I tried to think about what could have gone wrong with the first attempt, and looking back, I think that maybe it was that I didn't use a high quality chocolate. Some chocolate chips that you buy at the grocery store are not really meant to be melted. They're meant for things like chocolate chip cookies or things that have chocolate chips, so they are not intended to melt down totally. Also, looking back, I'm not quite sure why I added the heavy whipping cream. I think it was just me pressing the panic button and trying to find a way to save it. But like I said, I think the problem was that I wasn't using the right type of chocolate, so nothing could have saved it. So even though this recipe is really easy, make sure that you use a high quality chocolate when you make it. Although I thought about keeping the failed fudge attempt a secret, I wanted to share it with everyone because I think that a lot of cooks have had the experience of making a recipe that was supposed to be easy. It only had a few ingredients and it only had a few steps, but for some reason it went wrong. However, in this case, I've already made the mistake for you, so learn from me. If you're looking for the best easy fudge recipe this Christmas, be sure to give this one a try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!